Good morning, guys. Okay, so I wanted to cover a couple of things. And I talked about this before, but um, I'm going to bring it out in the open um, some more and show how it, this has infiltrated the church. The church, or some of these religious leaders, um, would have you think that this... is biblical. You can see on the screen, planting money seeds. I'm going to plant a seed and it's going to grow because now I'm creating a situation where God has to help me. And they'll tell you, you plant this much, plant this much, the more you plant, you know, all these different things that they're, and they placed this in the category of witchcraft. There's more about tithing, how people put, well, if you tithe, God's going to bless you abundantly. Well, is, should that be the reason why you're tithing? To get more from God? And that's what planting money seeds is. So I'm going to plant a $1,000 money seed, and God's going to make it $10,000. You know, all that kind of stuff. Almost like they're putting it in God's savings account. This is witchcraft, and it has infiltrated the church very sneakily. This is... All the things involving money. Magic masala, how to grow money plant. Agricultural rituals, how to grow money plant. Magic seed, old school runescape wiki. Lunaria silver dollar, growing and caring for a money plant. Now, true, it's just a plant. It doesn't actually have money on it, but they use it in their in their spells. Wiccan love spells, plant and herb magic, all this junk. And it's all, it's all... It's all crap. So on this website here, I found this article. Now look at this. Look how much. Now on the, on, in the church, they say, oh, who was it? Somebody recently was like, you plant a $54.17 money seed. And what he had linked that to was Isaiah 54, 17 or something like that. It had nothing to do with anything. But he linked those two together, thinking that, that he was doing something. And it didn't make any sense. But look at what they have here. This is all different spells that they put in here. The very first one is you need a dollar bill and a quarter. And then it shows you how to put it all together. Well, that's taking money and planting a seed. They've, the churches have literally done the same thing. And it just goes on and on and on. Financial difficulties. Increased cash flow. And it all involves you taking money and planting it. Ridiculous. But this is what the church has come to. A money jar. Money spell. Money spell. Money spell. Money spell. Money spell. Look at this. It's all the love of money. Money spell. It's all evil. So, I don't even want to read that stuff. So, this is what the church has adopted, is this money seed thing. And they tell you, well, you need to plant a money seed. And God's going to anoint that. He's going to bless that and he's going to bring that out and the thing is these people keep planting these anoint these money seeds not paying many of them not paying their bills and going into debt just to do this because they think it's going to get them more money it's the same thing as playing the lottery well i'm gonna go buy five dollars in lotto tickets but um if i don't win i'm just gonna buy more constantly throwing at money at something it's not going to change your your state. Oh, but there's this person, there's that person. Mm -hmm. And what happens to them five years later? All the money's gone. Seed money in action. Seed money, listen to this right here. Seed money is your thanks to God for that which you shall receive. When you plant a seed or shoot in your greenhouse, you expect it to become a full-grown plant. Or you wouldn't bother to go to the through the effort. So it is with planting seed money. First comes the seed, then comes the full blossom. Listen to this. Seed money is your thanks to God for that which you shall receive. So what I'm doing, I already know God's going to bless me, but I'm going to plant this seed to show him that I'm thanking him for that. That's, that's witchcraft. That's witchcraft. Because that's exactly what this is. Plant the, put the spell together, plant it, and you wait for that. That's, that's you saying thanks for the, what you're going to receive to the universe. <clears throat> so guys, stay away from that stuff. Do not plant seeds. 
If it's on your heart to support your own church, go for it. But don't plant. Don't don't plant money seeds when it comes to the church, and don't or don't get into witchcraft. A seed faith offering is money given in faith that God will multiply it and return it to the giver. The more money you give and the more faith you have, the more money you get in return. Prosperity preachers often solicit gifts to their ministries by promising such in-kind returns. Send me ten dollars and trust God, and to give you back a thousand. And then you go read the testimonies how. It doesn't happen. And the ones that it does happen, it just so happened to coincide with their payday. Look what he did. I got my paycheck today. No, that's not what it was. So you can look this stuff up yourself. It, it's, it's a joke. And it's witchcraft. And they've been doing it for quite a while now. And it does talk about tithing and sowing seeds. It's just ridiculous. Because you're not doing it from the gift of love in your heart. You're doing it from a place of, I'm going to get something out of this. That's not biblical. And that's not godly. You give. You give just to give. I love them and I'm going to give. I love God. I'm going to give. I'm just going to give because I want to give. Not giving to get something back. And what's funny is, is that when they do give this stuff, they take it off their taxes too. Well, you just got it back on your taxes. Why is God going to give you more? It doesn't work that way. It never has worked that way. Silliness and ridiculousness. Okay, so I wanted to cover that, but I'm also going to cover something else. And uh, I, these are two videos, but I'm going to put them in one because i got to take off. Um, Diamond Dustification did a great video. Uh, I think it was last night. Talking about the thing going on with Todd from It Is Finished in his situation. I know a lot of people are upset that we're talking about it out in the open. But here's the thing. There's a reason why this was brought out in the open. And I think, uh, I think our father did that. These kinds of situations tend to show you who's really in the faith and who isn't. And Diamond does a great job as he shows what some of these other websites have been, or the YouTube pages have been talking about. And many people are part of this and know about this, and they're very upset about what's been said in other camps. I did a video on this. I don't know the situation, but I covered it from a biblical standpoint that we are not to be judging these people. They have things going on in their lives, and the, the best way we can help them is to reach a hand of grace out there. But, these other people, it's hate, condemnation, mocking, scoffing. This should be a clear indicator to you who loves the Lord, who loves their brothers and sisters, and who is walking in truth and faith, and who isn't. Because the person walking in faith, the person following what the Bible says, is going to love them whether they make a mistake or not. Because we do the same thing. We make the same mistakes. Yet you got people that think they're sinless, <clears throat> and they think they're perfect, that are casting hate and discontent all over this, this situation. Number one, none of us can say whether Todd is saved or not, or his wife. None of us. We don't have that authority. We can't see into their heart. Number two, just because someone sins does not mean they've lost their salvation. Does not mean they're on the outs. We're all, we all sin. All the time. But it's how you deal with this stuff that is what shows how much of a Christian you really are. And this situation has unfolded, I think, and come out in the open because God wants to show everybody who's a Christian and who isn't. Who's walking in love and who isn't. Because it's all about love. It's not about hate and condemnation. Now, true, this is a situation that needed to be dealt with under wraps. It needed to be dealt with privately. Well, unfortunately, it didn't. It came out. But this situation, <clears throat> as bad as it is, could actually be used as a positive. One, it's calling out the nature of this sin out in the open, and the people involved are being convicted, and they're going to be changed by this. Number two, those who are truly walking in love are addressing this thing from a biblical standpoint. Those who aren't are addressing this from a carnal standpoint. We now have a clear line separating who's who. Because if anybody has run off at the mouth about this openly, that should tell you something about their heart. But people who have addressed this from a much more biblical standpoint, standing for these... I'm standing for my brothers and sisters, my brother and sister sinners, because I'm a sinner too. You have a problem? Let's get it fixed. I'm not going to condemn somebody 
because they do something and it got put out in the open because and, and I end up doing the same thing and the Bible talks about that and I covered that in the video that I, that I did oh you who are you old man to cast doubt on this person when you do the same thing speak about the law but don't follow it now uh, several of them people got mad because that one video I did I was talking about them being overweight yet they say they follow the Ten Commandments how can you be overweight and follow the Ten Commandments because under the law People that got overweight were considered gluttons and were put to death. And they, and they took it and they ran with it and they made it sound like something different, but it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, if you're going to say you're following the law, you'd better have yourself in order. And you can clearly look at these people's lives and see that they're not in order. It's, you know, violently obvious that their lives are not in order. <clears throat> look at how they're reacting to this situation. Now, I can't speak on this situation personally because... I don't have any personal knowledge of it, but I can come from a biblical standpoint on how we are to address situations like this. This one just happens to have a name to it. <clears throat> and this is how you use your indicator of, well, I'm looking at this person, how do I know this person is really on the right path? Well, here's a situation that's come up. Let's see how they deal with it. In Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Who's doing that? This is just one verse you can take and, and look at and see who's doing that. You should be starting to check names off the list. Not this one, not this one, not this one, not this one, not this one. Because they very, very vocally talked about this in a very negative manner, condemning both parties. And that's not right. It's not biblical. It's not what they should be doing. Good morning. In Mark eleven twenty five, 25, and whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. See a lot of forgiveness already. And that's what we should be doing as, if we're going to claim that we're following Christ and claim that we're in the gospel of grace, we should be forgiving. It sucks that it happened. It happens constantly. You just don't hear about all of it. We just happen to hear about this one. But we must forgive. We need to forgive and move forward because the, those people need help. They don't need somebody to condemn them. John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The best thing that could happen is to get them to repent of the things that they've done and turn towards God for this, for the answers. That's the answer to this situation. And move forward from there. There are kids involved. That's who I'm worried about is the kids. The adults can take care of themselves. Matthew 6, 15, But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is a fairly dire warning here of how we are to conduct ourselves. Yet I see all, these, uh, all this condemnation going on in these other channels. It's terrible. Matthew 18, 21 through 22, Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times, Jesus said, I did not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven times. You know what 70 times seven is? That's a lot. So when a situation like this comes up, what do we do? And this person didn't even sin against me, yet I forgive them of what's happened because I'm a sinner too. Why would I not do that? Jesus extended grace and that gift. God extended that grace and gift through Jesus and the sacrifice he did on the cross to every single sinner on the planet. Is it such a small thing for us to extend that same grace to them? To each other? Especially when the Bible says to do it? Matthew 6, 14-15 For if you forgive others trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you. Your trespasses, these people on this other camp have got a lot to answer for because they are not doing this. They are not walking in truth. They are not walking in faith. They are not walking in forgiveness and in love like the Bible says. Oh, but they follow the Ten Commandments, so they're righteous. Mm, no, I don't think so. Because of all the things they should be doing, they're missing. And they're going and doing the things that it's not required for them to do. Luke 6, 37, judge not and you will not be judged, condemn not and you will not be condemned, forgive and you will be forgiven. So if those people over there, if you've been watching somebody and they've been coming out against this particular situation, 
or any similar situation and going out of their way to condemn it and to mock it and even in lieu of other people trying to point out the truth to them will not repent and will not turn away from this this is an indicator for them because they're going violating against violating scripture that they say they follow they're going against the very words of the God they say they follow and I haven't even touched on what Paul has to say about this because a lot of them don't like Paul Colossians 3.13, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Look at this. If one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. That's how we're to walk. Okay, so somebody did something terrible. Who hasn't done that? Every single person watching this video should be able to sit and think, yeah, I've done some pretty terrible stuff in my life. Two other people. And I would like to be forgiven of those things. Now you go to the people who have done those things to you and you forgive them and let it go. Because the Bible says this is how we should be to each other. But yet you see people not doing that in this situation. What does that tell you? This should be your indicator, your line, I got the people on this side and I got people on this side. And there's some that are floating in the middle, but not too many. So I'm going to ignore everybody from the middle over to this side. These are the ones that are trying to walk in truth and going according to what the Bible says. Because we're in forgiveness. Okay, a mistake was made. Let's get it fixed. James 5.16, therefore confess your sins to one another. And pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. And this is also what we should be doing, is praying for them. A lot of grace preachers have stood up and said, guys, here's what we need to do about this situation. And it's biblical. But a whole bunch of people have also stood up and said exactly the opposite. And that's not biblical. They're doing everything they can to cast as much shade on this as possible. Ooh, look. Ooh, look. You ever wonder why people don't want to believe? Because they see how things are going on in the Christian world. And I dare say, people that are doing those things aren't even saved. Because the love of the Holy Spirit should be overwhelming within a truly indwelt Christian. If you don't see that love, that's a problem. And that should be another indicator. Psalm 103, 10-14. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as, as, far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgression, transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. He knows that we're broken. He knows that we're easy, easily swayed. He knows that we're trapped in sin very easy. But he forgives us of those things. If he does this for us, why, why are we not doing it for each other? Because for us to do it for each other should be a small thing. And yet, we see the exactly the opposite. Proverbs 10, 12, Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. Now, we have a situation going on where people have been hurt. Okay. And this is going to have to be dealt with on their individual level. All of us standing outside of this problem, we should be dealing with this from a place of love and compassion because almost all of us should have a direct, um, direct experience relating to this same situation. Almost all of us. Not everybody, but almost. We should have more compassion towards the situation, knowing the pain and the destruction that it causes. And let's get in there and let's get this forgiven. And let's see if there's any help we can do for these people. Because right now what they need is help. Right now what they, right now what they need is people forgiving and extending a hand of grace to get them out of the situation they're in. Now, if the situation goes south on their end and they turn away, that's their decision. But the Bible says, 70 times, 7 times do we forgive. Rebuke. 
We rebuke and we address it, but we forgive it. Forgive and move on. Because the longer we hold on to it, the more it festers. And that opens the door for Satan and demonic influence to come in. And that creates dissension and division. We don't want that. We need to put this stuff down and be done with it. It's unfortunate that it's gone that way. It's terrible that it's gone that way. But it is what it is. Okay, I'm going to stop there on that one. I need to show you something else. So this is the mentality of the people we're dealing with. These people uh, over here in this other camp. Uh, we were just talking about them, how it's not about forgiving, not about... Here's the mentality of the people. Now, I did a video a while back on Lee Geosium and how he opened like nine accounts trying to get access to my channel because he so desperately wanted to comment. Well, somebody else has started another, yet another channel. I think this is the fifth one and has subbed to me. Do you recognize the picture in the face? Let me make it bigger. Do you recognize that person? Oh look, there's her picture right there again. So Nez, if you're watching, this person is on your channel watching your videos and probably commenting. Tony Sue, if you're watching, she's on your channel. So this person right here, Minister of Christ, once one sealed, I don't even know what it says, she keeps changing the name of it. That that's exactly the same person. I did a video about this person. This person is crazy. They have mental issues. They sound good when they comment. But there's certain indicators and keywords in those this person's comment that show they hit, this person has a mental malfunction. On Renee, Renee's last Thursday throwdown, this person was in the uh, chat, and me and Cody were talking, and I got this person to admit that their other account was theirs just by the way I was speaking to him. They, she was on one account one of her accounts, and she had somebody else commenting from her other account. And they were commenting to each other. You, When you look, and you could see the icons were the same. It was both the same person. But when you go look at the comments, the comments were totally different. The word spelling was correct. There was punctuation in one of them. The other one, everything was run together. And that's what this person does. They, they don't hardly ever use punctuation. They run everything together. But you could see the the clear difference between two different people that were commenting on two different accounts yet I've shown she has she had uh, three accounts the first video I did she's got five of them now and it's the same exact person and this shows you the mentality so mad that I won't let them comment on my channel I've got them all I got all the accounts shadow banned that they are still so desperately trying to prove themselves and trying to fit in yet have shown themselves a false prophet multiple times already and have shown that they don't know the scriptures have shown that they have no knowledge of truth they just spout and repeat what everybody else says my mother is the same way I know this person in inside and out because my mother is exactly the same I can have a conversation with my mother and suddenly go into a, a, talking about thermodynamics and she'll repeat back to me what I said trying to sound like she knows about thermodynamics. And my mother has no training in this. She does good to drive her full-size pickup truck. That, I know this kind of person very intimately. So when you run into stuff like this, you have to deal with it firmly and harshly because they don't understand anything else. I've already addressed this woman. I have no interest in, in talking to this person at all because I can't have a conversation with this person. Everything this person says was, I correct you. I correct you, Mr. Christian. Well, no, you didn't because you took uh, scripture out of context and you were wrong and it had been proven a false prophet. There are no prophets nowadays. Everybody has the ability to be a prophet. So you can't make yourself special. So hopefully she's watching. Oh, I've already got her blocked. Okay, so she thought if she unsubscribed and resubscribed, that would change the situation. No, still blocked. 
Don't care. I'm not interested in hearing what you have to say. You've already shown exactly who you are. Here's this one. Here's all her pictures on there. Crying. Oh, this is the old Sarah Bradley account. Here's Sarah Bradley. You're posting Sarah Bradley's testimony on your Sarah Bradley account. That makes no sense. This one's, I'm glad I got this one blocked. But see, even on the Sarah Bradley one, she changed the name of that one. And she com she came in and, and subbed and tried to comment. Oh, but wait. Nope. Here we go, another GoFundMe. Silliness, you guys. So, you guys, when you're dealing with people like this, you must deal with them firmly. You must deal with them aggressively. And people are going to think that I mean by doing that. But look, once a person shows me clearly where their frame of thought is. One, they can't be taught. Two, they refuse to admit when they make a mistake. Three, they're not in the gospel. I don't want no, no more conversations with them. Period. So, again, this person's making a fool of themselves. Because they're on everybody else's channels going ham on their comment sections. So, if y'all see these people, if I need to point out all the names and accounts again, I will. Block this person. It's all the same person. And I now count five accounts. And sometimes they have somebody else. I don't I have an idea of who it is, but I'm not sure but I'm not sure, so I can't say nothing yet. Block them. Because it's gonna the conversation's gonna sound good at first, but when you read further into the conversation, then you're gonna see a whole lot more come out of it that tells you exactly where this person's heart is. So be careful guys. Protect yourselves. The witchcraft that's being put out there. Protect yourselves. The All the problems that are going on in the church and in the body that is in witchcraft and hatred and mocking and scoffing. Protect yourselves. Watch over yourselves. Use the armor that is in Ephesians 6 to defend against this stuff. And stick with truth. Stay in Scripture. Always stay in Scripture. Because if you don't, you're going to get sucked into this stuff. It's very easy to get sucked into it. It's very easy to get distracted by it. Let's stay focused on the gospel. Let's stay focused on God's love, Christ's love, this free gift of salvation. And let's get as many people led into truth as we possibly can. So, you guys know, I, I put it out there so you guys know, here, Sarah Finley, Vipers today are the Pharisees of yesterday, yeah? She's contending and standing up for the truth, and like everybody else is. Lily girl's been on fire for it a bunch. So watch out, guys, and be safe. And remember, even Sarah Bradley, I forgive her for the way she, I mean, because there was some conversation that went on between me and her that you guys didn't get to see. I screenshotted it, but there's no reason to, to share it anymore. And it was very nasty. This person showed me exactly where they're coming from. But I forgive her. I don't hold any ill will towards her. I just don't want to talk to her. Just like all the others I have blocked. I just don't want to talk to them. I already know where the conversation is going to go. And it will be endless. 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 So, if I'm mean for doing that, then I'm mean. But I still forgive them. But I do these videos like this to warn you guys. Just like about the witchcraft, the money seeds. If you're doing that stuff, stop. Please stop doing it. That's dangerous. And it's not biblical to plant seeds of money to, in, in hopes of you're going to get more money. You put your full faith and trust in him and he'll give you everything you need. I have everything I need. People look at my lifestyle. I'm at poverty level on my income. Yet I have everything I need and I'm getting out of debt. That's God working in my life. And it's amazing. Alright, I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you guys in the next video.